Hello, I'm Julie Kay, helping you find your way through grief and loss. And I'm in the series still on Pathways to Peace. I love to sign, but my, my um, channel is very much about helping people through grief and loss, as I have learned to do, and also to uh, bring awareness about the opioid crisis and education in that regard as well, telling my daughter's story. So my question for you today is, do you believe that the influences around you affect your peace? Do you realize that the people you hang out with, the people you spend the most time with, that they affect your peace? Do you think that's so? Let me know in the, in the comments. I would like to know your opinion of that. Um, I believe very much so they do. I believe our influences very much affect us. And I believe that's an area that's in our control versus what's out of our control um, that we can work on and that we can take back. If we've lost control in that area, we can take it back. That doesn't mean we get out of every relationship that is unpeaceful or difficult, but we can take back our control in that area. And it is so liberating and empowering. And that's what I'm here to do is to empower you with tools and, and mindsets and ways of thinking that help you to regain control of your life, to manage your life and to be able to move, move through your morning. Okay. So this is about friends. Um, Gary Rose says peace giving relationships. I call it like a peace friend, um, looking for peace friends, friends that help that exude peace, people that exude peace and, and that help you find peace and help you to walk in peacefulness. So with that said, I have a couple verses like I always do that I'm referring to. Now there's no verses necessarily that directly say peace, you know, peaceful friends, like look for peaceful friends or something like that. But um, I wanna mention Proverbs 18, 24. It says a man of many co companions or a woman of many companions may come to ruin. So it's saying that like many acquaintances, I think it's saying many acquaintances and friends, you can still come to ruin with that. But there is a friend, there's a friend that sticks closer than a brother or closer than a sister. What does that verse mean to you? Um, does that verse indicate that there has to be peace for somebody, for you to be really close to somebody and have a close special relationship with somebody that is stronger than your brother or sister or your parents or, you know, family member closer than a brother, closer than a sister. Do you think there's peace in that relationship then? Yeah, I think definitely peace would be included in that relationship. So another verse that I want to read is from Psalms, um, sorry, Proverbs verse, chapter 13, verse 20. And it says that he who walks with the wise grows wise, but a companion of fool, fools suffers harm. Or when I look that up, because a lot of times I like to look up verses that I'm referring to on Google and I put in lexicon. So I would put in Proverbs 13, verse 20, lexicon. And uh, there are other ways to do it, but that will help you to look at a kind of a diagram or graph of the actual original meeting. <coughs> Do this.
So I just read it. Excuse me. So um, one way to interpret that would be that somebody who is a companion of fools is, is led to evil, um, to do evil or bad things. But anyway, um, so it talks about walking with the wise grows wise. So there's the positive. You can see verses in Proverbs that refer to the negative. When you do the negative, this is the negative results and kind of the reaping of what you sow. But there's a positive. If you walk with the wise, you grow wise. Makes sense, right? Again, that's the influences. So the negative can influence us negatively. And the positive can influence us positively. So I want to refer to um, James, the New Testament, chapter 3, because I remembered that it has this passage about what wisdom is and the results of wisdom. So I'm not going to read the whole part of this in James, but I'm going to read 17 and 18. It says in James 3, verse 17, But the wisdom that comes from heaven is first of all pure, and then peace-loving. Peace-loving, considerate, submissive, full of mercy, good fruit, impartial and sincere. And then it says, Peacemakers who sow in peace raise a harvest of righteousness. So there is the reaping of what you sow in this that, that that's refers to. Peacemakers. Jesus says in uh, Matthew 5, 9, that blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall inherit the kingdom of God, I believe. Um, I didn't have that open, but Matthew 5, 9, he refers to the peacemakers being blessed. Now, I want to just say kind of in my own words and words I've heard in the past, it doesn't mean be a peacekeeper necessarily in the sense that you just do everything to keep peace with people and therefore you may never confront things or speak the truth when it needs to be spoken yes in a kind way but maybe you withhold things that do need to be said because you're trying to keep peace so we're not referring to that and that's I don't believe that's what Jesus is referring to so moving into that is kind of saying that we have a part in our peace, even when we're searching for people around us. And that's important to be around peaceful people. Um, you know, as far as our circle or inner circle or close friends or what have you. But it's also saying that we have a part in that. We need to be peacemakers. Okay. So that lines up with something that Gary Rose said um, in one of his emails that the best way to find and build relationships is to be a person of peace ourselves. So I want to point that out, that we need to be working on it in our own time, in our own self-care, in our own uh, personal development, if you want to call it that, our own mental health. We need to be working on that body, soul, and spirit. We need to be working on us by ourselves, with ourselves. That doesn't mean that we don't do that around other people too. But then we, we do need to consider our influences. So today is really about considering your influences and, and being a little more discerning about your influences, thinking through it, being intentional. Who do you want as a friend? Who hmm, do you feel peace around? And again, if you're a giver like me, I want to help other people. And so those people that I help, they definitely could have lack of peace issues. It doesn't mean I'm not going and helping them and, and doing things with them. But I still need to have those relationships with people who, who help me to feel the peace of God. And here's a few things I'd like to have you all put in the comment what you think um, some of the things that go together with peace, if you want to say. Um, some things that you feel or experience when you're around peaceful people. So I realized from the past, at one point, I didn't feel like I had many relationships with peaceful or healthy people, but I didn't realize that until I started saying, oh, look at this person, that person. I feel safe with them. Here's my signing. I feel safe with them. I feel accepted. I feel respected. I feel listened to. And that's, those are people, you know, a few people I would feel peace around. So I had to realize that I needed that more. Wow. I can have that. I didn't, I actually used to think I wasn't allowed to have that or wasn't worthy of it. Maybe I don't know, but 
anyway, that is something to think about. Can you think of other things that go with that in your life? Um, another thing that I want to share that Gary Rose has, because I love this quote, he says, as we commit ourselves to a life of peace, no matter what, we begin to live above our pain, grief, and circumstances. Very well said. That is what I love to help people do. I'm, I call myself Thrive Coach, not all the time, because I love to help people to thrive through it all. And thriving means you keep moving forward and growing. It doesn't mean life is perfect. It doesn't mean you don't get stuck at times or have problems at times. It means you are able and learn how to keep moving forward, even in the most difficult of times, which is part of what I learned to do through my daughter's death, COVID, trying to get custody of grandkids, then not being able to, then being cut out of their lives pretty much. All of that, I learned how to walk in, in peace. Did I have all 100% peace? No, but I learned how to walk in peace beyond the circumstances with my relationship with the Lord, with the getting into his word, with all, several things, all kinds of things that I do teach in my coaching. So if you would love to learn with me and me to help you with that, I would be honored to do so. Please get in touch with me and we can set up a, a time to get together. Okay, on Zoom or in person if you're local. But bottom line, um, that is what I learned. So I love to help people to thrive through it all, through grief and loss. And I believe we can do that. And I've learned how to do that. And then I, when I struggle, I have to go back to those same things that help, have helped me in the past. And um, so definitely a relationship with the Lord is important. And it's important to think who we're spending our time with. I want to refer to uh, a song. I'm hope, trying to get back to that because... We always, I always pick a song every week at our grief support group. And the one for this week is Peace Be Still by Hope Darst. Um, I played that song before. I've listened to it before, but I want to say part of what she says. I will trust the voice that speaks over me. I will trust the voice that speaks over me is one of the things she says in that song. And we need to learn to trust God and, his, and receive his peace because Jesus said, peace I leave with you peace I give to you, not as the world gives, I give to you, not as the circumstances dictate, I give to you. Even in the midst of loss, even in the midst of hardship, even in the midst of heartbreak, you can give supernatural peace. 